Good evening, Bison Nation, and welcome to Season 3 of Extra Innings, Keeping Up with Herd Outside the Park. I am your host, William Suttle, and I am here with Toledo Mudhead, Matt Whistler. He plays for the Toledo Mudhead AAA affiliate of the Detroit Tigers. How are you doing today, Matt? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Awesome. Well, Matt is from Bryan, Ohio, just about northwest of Toledo. Uh, in 2011, he was drafted by the San Diego Padres. He did have a scholarship to go to Ohio State, but decided to take the route and go straight to the big show. So what was that decision to say, you know what, I'm not going to take that scholarship. I'm not going to go the collegiate route. I'm just going to go straight to the show. Yeah, I think a lot of it was just kind of uh, just progress as I kept going. Um, you know, we got we talked to a lot of scouts when I was a junior, going into my senior year, and then senior year, just kind of a decision we had to make between me. And obviously, I talked to my parents a lot about it, my agent and different things, just trying to figure out the best route for me. You know, my, my end goal was to mention the big league. So, we figured the best route at that time was to go and uh, pro ball, get underneath some you know pro tutelage, and just get into that program, learn you know, how the program works, and just kind of go at it that way. And, and lucky for me, that it's it's worked out pretty well so far. And then speaking of that, you know, talking to the agents and family, you know, there's a couple articles out there that you know you really you know are big into family. Mm-hmm. You really talked about it with your parents, especially your father, who's like, and this is what you felt was the best decision. Even today. You know, you're 12 years into your career. Is that still something you go by? Like, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go run this by my family. They, they yeah, I would think uh, today, obviously, like I still run stuff for my family, but more or less it's me and my wife and making decisions. Uh, you know, obviously at my age as well, but for the most part, it's me and my wife. We're trying to figure out what's, what's best for our family. Uh, you know, just us two right now, but uh, trying to figure out what's best for us, best for me. Um, you know, I hopefully still have a couple more years left in this career, but just trying to see what the best opportunity is for me each and every year. Yeah, exactly. And that's all you can ask for, you know, you know, every every year is a different chapter, whether that if it's a new team or the same team, you just you don't know. So it's always good to keep an open mind. And, you know, with that being said, you have been in the league for 12 years. You've been on many teams. So how has it been going to different organizations, different teams, being a part of a postseason roster than, you know, going also when you first started rookie ball? I mean, sir, that's one spectrum all, all the way to yeah. the top, you know? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, my first couple of years, the first years that I got in pro ball, just kind of getting adjusted and getting to the levels. Um, the last 10 years has pretty much been triple A the big league. So uh, from that aspect, it's been pretty much similar. Um, you know, big league, obviously, it's where you want to be. It's where the top level competition is. It's the best lifestyle uh, by far. So big league is where you want to be. But, you know, I've been my time in triple A. Going organization to organization uh, can be a little tough at times. Um, you know, two or three in a year can be challenging just from the aspect of, you know, getting to know people, making new friends, trying to impress the new team. Um, you know, having a wife now the last couple of years, it's hard to then have to pack up all of our stuff and move to a whole new city mid-season. Um, you know, you only got a couple of days to do it. She has to take some of the front of it sometimes, um, getting a lot of our stuff and getting car shipment and stuff figured out. So there's a lot of that goes into it, and I think that's probably the hardest part of it, um, just getting reacclimated, making new friends on teams, having my wife now have to make new friends. So it goes to the territory. It's something that we've really enjoyed, and we've had – you know, a lot of blessings to meet a lot of good people across the years. Which is all you can ask for. Yeah. yeah. You know, have a you know, supportive wife, supportive family, and also yeah. sweet, nice people. And now with that being said, I've mentioned now twice, you've been in the league for 12 years. Mm-hmm. How has it been without the pitch clock? So now you have the pitch clock, you're like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta re-alter my brain real quick. I, I gotta get yeah. a little bit quicker. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think, yeah, the spring training took me a couple a couple hours to figure it out. Once I've got to Toledo, it's been fine. It's been, it's, yeah, I found my rhythm on how to use it. You know, I find a place for me that's comfortable where I don't feel rushed anytime. Um, you know, I haven't really had too many issues with it now. But, you know, obviously it's a different game in the big leagues if I can get up there. Everything's a little bit faster up there. and still trying to find that rhythm in a big league game where you can calm yourself down in that, that quick amount of time. And now, do you like it or do you not? You know, so far it hasn't bothered me. Like I said, it'll be different, you know, if I'm in the big leagues. It's a little bit easier to slow the game down down here. Um, it's not the same pressure and atmosphere that it is up there. So... Uh, still intense down here, but it's not necessarily the same. So I think the biggest adjustment is can you do it in the big league game in a big situation? You know, you only got 20 seconds to kind of calm your mind and your brain down. Um, can you go out there and execute a pitch? And that's going to be the biggest thing. You don't have that extra 10 seconds to, to really gather yourself. So are you able to do that in that good amount of time? And that's going to be the adjustment that you, you just have to make. At least you've been able to slowly act on yeah. yourself. It's not like you just yeah, went no straight. Yeah. You, know, you got to slowly get into it. Because it's been a big change for everybody. I mean, you're an you're example of one of those pitchers who – it's been around the league, and now you're like, man, I gotta retrain myself. You know, I gotta you know. get. But you know, then you look at some people. You know, like teammate Andrew Magnum. That's all he's ever known. Yeah. You know, pitch clock. You know, he's used to it by now. But you know, it's a it's a very interesting topic of discussion. Talking to somebody who's been in the league to do yeah. that. Um, and then also just with you know yourself. You know, being a part of the Iron Bison. You know, we have a large amount of teams. A 
big thing that we stress is recovery. Being a 12 year veteran, what do you do that you're able to stay so healthy and to not be on you know, the shelf day after day and month after month? Yeah, the biggest thing is taking care of yourself. It's a lot of work. Uh, you know, the older you get to, the more prep work you gotta do. But uh, I felt like, at least from Ohio, that the nice thing is you didn't play year round, right? You had months off. I think our season was pretty much end of March through you know, maybe October when I was in high school, but when I was younger, it was August. So you take a couple months off. Uh, I would either start throwing in January back in the day uh, to get ready for March. I would start throwing two months in advance and kind of get a build up progression in that aspect. Um, when I was younger, it's obviously a lot less stuff. You're just kind of going to different sports and that's kind of keeping you busy. But then getting your throwing and training stuff in before the season, you know, your first day of a catch can't be the day that you guys start practices or all that stuff. You got to do a lot of stuff on your own. Um, the older you get, the more you can start getting into more arm care things, um, doing some dumbbell routines, get some shoulder care stuff. Um, you can start doing some prep work and stuff, trying to make sure your hips and your joint mobility, your back, all that stuff are, are things. And obviously, once you get to my age of 30, that stuff becomes even more important. You know, you got to do stuff each and every day to make sure that you know, your body's in the right position to blow. Awesome. And I know the youth kids will eat that up. Even any kid who watches this video, just, you know, when, I feel like once they hear it from somebody in your position, it starts to click a little yeah. bit more because when you hear it from mom and dad, you're just like, no, no. Oh, yeah. okay, mom, I, I hear you, but no, you're it's serious. Like this is just taking care of your body. You want to play for a long time, you got to take care of your body. Yeah, and it starts when you're young. I mean, if I didn't do the stuff that I did at 21, 22, then it would probably be a lot harder now. So yep. get into a rhythm earlier when you're younger, and it's a lot easier to do it the rest of your life. Yep. Well, Vice Nation, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please follow this man's career. He's going to do really big things. Also, Matt, we hope you have a nice, healthy, and safe 2023 season, and thanks for doing this with us. All right. Appreciate it.